Hello, I'm Ido from Lensbit, and we are here with the Sigma 150 to 500 millimeter f5 to f6.3. This lens was announced back in 2008, and over the past month we have been playing with it. Uh, this lens is not a part of the uh, new uh, Sigma line of lenses, the art, the contemporary, and the sport lenses, but it's still a very interesting lens. It's quite cheap. It's a, it has a very long focal length. And it's very interesting to see how this lens actually performs uh, under uh, real-world conditions. So we've been playing with it. Uh, let's start by uh, talking a bit about the features of this lens and the build quality. The Sigma 150 to 500 millimeter is quite a long lens, as you can see. It's about 252 millimeter when it's closed without the hood. And when it's open, like this, it's about 300 millimeter, so this is a very long lens. In terms of weight, it weighs almost two kilograms, which is about 4.4 uh, pounds. So this is quite a hefty amount. Uh, we used it quite, uh, quite a lot on a tripod, but uh, we also sh shot a handheld. This is something that you can do, but the, uh, it's very hard to actually, it's not that hard to hold it, but it's very hard to actually uh, get very clear images when you're hand holding it, unless you're very, uh, you have very sturdy and, uh, and stable hands. So this, uh, this is uh, the size and length of the lens. Uh, the lens itself, as you can see, comes with a color. This is something that uh, comes with no extra charge. This is uh, something that doesn't come with all uh, telephoto lenses. Uh, the, uh, the color is metal and very well built. Uh, you can see it here. Um, in terms of um, the build quality of the lens itself, it's very high, as Sigma almost always does. Uh, the zoom ring is nice uh, and smooth. The focusing ring is also nice and smooth, and this is interesting because a lot of uh, cheap uh, telephoto lenses don't have uh, very large and uh, especially not very smooth uh, focus rings. So this is a very nice touch. Um, in terms of um, bottoms, we have here, uh, first of all, we have a lock. So uh, if you want to prevent the, uh, the lens from opening in your bag or uh, in any other situations, it has a very significant lens creep. Uh, it opens uh, unintentionally if you hold it uh, downwards because it's very heavy. Then you can lock it like this and then the, the lens doesn't open. So this is a nice feature. Um, we also have uh, two other uh, bottoms here. We have the manual focus and the auto focus here. Uh, auto and manual, and we have uh, the stabilizer which has three states. It has off like this, one which is what you will use when hand holding it, and two which is something that you're going to use when panning if you're uh, using it on a tripod and uh, moving the lens uh, from uh, left to right. And this is something that we have used quite a lot. So this is the, s the three states that you have uh, on the lens itself. The manual focus on the Sigma uh, is pretty nice. As we said, the ring itself is very smooth, so it's very uh, nice and comfortable to actually focus manually with the lens. In terms of autofocus, the lens is not very, very fast. So don't expect uh, performance like uh, professional lenses or professional uh, telephoto lenses, but it's, it works. You can work with it and you can shoot birds. Uh, you have some misses, but uh, we were able to shoot some uh, birds in flight without any any problem. Now in terms of uh, the um, accuracy of the uh, autofocus, um, we had to do some calibration with our camera and you might do, need to do the same uh, as well with your camera. So it really depends on the combination between, between the camera and the lens, but otherwise uh, it works and it pretty it's pretty accurate. Um, now, apart from that, uh, let's talk a bit about the uh, stabilizer. We use both uh, the one state and the two state uh, um, of the stabilizer on this lens. Uh, handheld, as we said before, it's pretty hard to actually uh, get very sharp, uh, sharply focused uh, images, but we don't think that the problem is actually the stabilizer. It's simply very hard to actually f uh, focus and stabilize the, the, uh, the, the lens hand handheld. Uh, now, in terms of uh, the stabilizer on a tripod, 
it does the, the work pretty well. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the, view the, the image on the viewfinder might shake a bit, even uh, if, if you're not completely accurate, if you're not completely stable on your tripod. So uh, this is another thing to keep in mind. Now let's move and talk a bit about the image quality of the lens. Before we talk to you about the image quality of this lens, we want to share with you a short clip that we recorded before, uh, which shows the uh, immense uh, focal length of this lens. Uh, we started, you can now see it on the screen, we started with 150 millimeter and went all the way up to 500 millimeter. Now you can see the image quality is pretty good, you can actually see the birds uh, in the view. And if you need to do some uh, video work, and you need a long reach, this lens is obviously an, an option. Now let's talk a bit about the image quality. Basically it all bears down to your expectations. If you expect to shoot um, wide open from a distance of uh, 30 meters, 100 feet or more, um, without a tripod, uh, it, in low light conditions, forget it. This is not the lens for you. But if you're more modest in your expectations and you're going to shoot at closer distances, let's say 10 meters, 15 meters or below, uh, and in clo close uh, apertures, we shot mostly in uh, f11 and f13, which is much better than the, uh, this lens wide open, on a tripod and at uh, good lighting conditions then uh, this lens can actually produce quite uh, usable images. You can see a few images on the screen and we have a few images uh, more on the review on LensVid. But uh, we actually realized that uh, when you know what you're doing with this lens and you're modest with your expectations, you can actually get some pretty good results. Uh, now, uh, this lens doesn't have a lot of vignetti. We use it on a D7100, so if you use it uh, on a full frame, your um, results may vary. But uh, on a crop uh, camera, we didn't, have a, we didn't see any vignetti. Um, in terms of other um, image issues, um, we, didn't expect, uh, we didn't expect and we didn't see any barrel distortion. Uh, you normally don't see them on uh, uh, long telephoto lenses. Um, now, apart from that, um, this is not a lens that you're going to use uh, on low light conditions in general. Uh, as we said, we, we use it on uh, f11 or f13, so you need very good lighting, uh, broad daylight, and this is a lens that uh, is mainly meant for shooting in, the, in those conditions. Uh, so what do, you think about, what do we think about this lens at the end of the day? Well. Obviously, this is not a professional lens. It's a lens intended specifically for amateurs, either for uh, nature, sports, uh, bird photographers, uh, or wildlife photographers, uh, who can't afford to actually buy the professional lenses, which cost thousands of dollars. Uh, for what, what you pay for this lens, the build quality is great. The image quality, if you take into consideration to consideration all the things that we have said before, uh, you can get actually quite decent images. Now, there are a few other alternatives on the market right now. Uh, the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter is a very interesting alternative just, uh, that was just announced uh, a few months ago. Uh, but uh, this lens is still a very viable option and you can read more about it on lensvid.com.